Hi there, I'm Shauna Robbins, CEO and founder of Third Spark Health, and today I have the pleasure of doing an Authority Magazine interview with Monica Molnar. We're going to be talking about thriving through menopause, wellness tips for women over 45. Monica is the co-founder and CEO of Alloy Women's Health, a digital health company revolutionizing the way women age by providing access to the information, expertise, and science-backed solutions they need to feel their best during perimenopause, menopause, and beyond. Monica, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Mm. Yeah. Good to talk to you. So tell me, how did you become involved in women's health and wellness? Well, I've always been interested in wellness, actually, and sort of taking care of myself. I I cook every night. I'm, you know, interested in in food generally. Before I be started Alloy, I actually had started a food company because I was interested in sort of the changing ways that women eat, or not women. Now I'm interested in women, but people, Americans eat um, and exercise. And you know, I've learned so much along the way in terms of caring for myself. But I I really became acquainted with menopause 10 years ago when I was 40 and I went into it overnight um, by sur surgery. I went into surgical menopause. I had my ovaries prophylactically removed after a positive BRCA diagnosis, the breast cancer gene. And it wasn't, it didn't come as a huge surprise that I had the BRCA, the BRCA gene. My mother and my grandmother both had had breast cancer very young and I had been screened for it from the time that I was 25. Sorry, I had been screened for breast cancer from the time that I was 25, but there really was nothing beyond the quite intensive every six month screening that I was doing beyond doing something surgical. And, you know, I was a young mother at the time. I um, was kind of in and out of the workforce um, for a period of time based on kind of the stat, my family and my young kids and and my ability to find good help, which was difficult when I was, um, I was working, you know, my kids were small. I actually had a job that um, I sort of lost my, my, my childcare and I had a really inflexible um, company that would not let me work part-time or so I, I was really focused on kind of mainly my family for between 30 and 40. And when I was 40, um, I decided to have the surgery because there was a lot of information that was kind of coming out really around the time that Angelina Jolie had her surgery and wrote a, a you know very important op-ed that um, obviously spoke to me. And there was some evidence or some uh, uh, something in there in one of the articles that said that if you're BRCA positive and you and you're um, you have your ovaries removed by the time you're 40 that you further reduce your risk of breast cancer. So I thought, okay, well, maybe this is, you know, this is a sign I should do this. Um, and I did because I, I really wanted to avoid in particular ovarian cancer, which my grandmother had also had, neither my grandmother nor my mother died of any of the cancers that they had. But, you know, as a young mother and with small children, I wanted to obviously sort of avoid as much as I could. But what literally nobody told me in of all the doctors that I went to at the you know major cancer center at, in New York City and, and other giant hospital systems, nobody said, by the way, you're going into menopause the next day and here's how you should deal with it. And so it was a huge surprise. Um, it, it really kind of knocked me off my ass <laughs> for lack of a better of a better word and um it was super difficult to to manage i know you're a sleep expert i didn't sleep for 6 or 8 months um literally could not sleep through the night and just that alone sent me into such a tailspin and made it so difficult for me to um be the mother that i wanted to be to go back to work which you know it, now i knew i wasn't having more kids and i needed to kind of contribute to the the family um, nut and and you know help my my husband and sort of that was important for my marriage and all the things but I just couldn't make sense of it because I couldn't sleep through the night and I was on edge and anxious and upset and you know wasn't really sure about what I was doing and so um, it took me a while to really sort of get settled but after six or eight months I did get a prescription for HRT and that helped me sleep through the night and sort of calmed a lot of the noise that was um, disrupting my life. And after that, I was able to get back to work. I started a, a business um, in, in food because as I mentioned, I was really interested in sort of the ways that um, just changing how we were eating and focusing on other things. And, um, but 
after a period of time, three or four years of doing that, it kind of became clear that like, I, w I started that with two other partners and it seemed like, okay, now one of us, we were sort of stepping on each other's toes. It, it was I, it was time for me to go off and spread my wings. Um, and that was around the time that I met my partner, Ann Fullenweider, who was the editor in chief of Mary Clara magazine. And she and I got to know each other just personally and, and started talking about all things <laughs> like this right. um, very fast. And I was like, you know, all of our everybody that we know is about to go into menopause. They don't really realize that it's coming to sock them in the face. And I think we need to at least let them know, you know how to do content. Like let's figure something out to alert women that this is about to happen. And one thing led to another. And, you know, here we are five years later with wow. Alloy where we really kind of realize that if you're not talking to women about estrogen at this stage of their lives, if you're not talking to them about menopause and what all of the things, we called ourselves alloy because it's not just about taking estrogen. It's an alloy is a combination of elements for strength and protection against corrosion. And so that is really important to sort of what our ethos is that, you know, there are all kinds of things. I'm back to your question of wellness and, you know, health and wellness, like it's a lot of stuff together that you need to be aware of and sort of incorporate and and every person is different so what's important to you and what you know what works for you might be slightly different for what works for me or you know the cocktail of symptoms that i have might be different from yours but you know just at least talking about it and bringing this to the forefront and letting women know that they're not alone and that um you know that there are solutions for pretty much everything that we're talking about or that we're suffering from is is really important. So I've always, I like taking care of myself. I like preventing problems. I am sort of a, you know, like a relentless optimizer. So I, I can't <laughs> look at something and not think, how do I make that better? And, you know, I think that that's, it's just really, I, I'm also, I like to also be in the moment and feel satisfied, which I think are two kind of conflicting, you know, um, characteristics or things that we all need to sort of learn how to how to incorporate at this stage of our lives, you know, make things better and also live in the moment and be happy and satisfied. Yeah. Well, if your hormones wellness. are out of whack, you can't do either. You cannot do either. And there's yeah. about a thousand and one ways that you can make menopause better. So first of all, thank you so much for being in this space <laughs> and offering alloy as an option to women. Can you just tell me about the products and how women can get involved with your company? Absolutely. So Alloy is an online um, clinic, essentially, or telehealth platform for women where they can find information, credible information, actually access the expertise. So one of the biggest problems we realized is that there are very, very few medical doctors who know anything about menopause, who have invested the time to stay up to date on, you know, on the current science about hormones as I, I'm sure you know, but for your listeners, there was in 2002, a, a study that was re stopped early called the Women's Health Initiative that yes. um, put this very incorrect information out into the world globally mm -hmm. that estrogen causes breast cancer, which we now know definitively not to be true. Taking estrogen will not cause breast cancer. And in fact, it really is helpful in um, reducing the risk of so many other chronic diseases of aging, like osteoporosis, which it's FDA approved to prevent, like heart disease, it's looking like the, you know, the data suggests that taking, starting estrogen at the time of the menopausal transition or perimenopause to menopause transition um, will reduce your risk of heart disease, looks very promising that it'll, it will reduce your risk of Alzheimer's. So there are a lot of really good reasons to take uh, estrogen for your long-term health, as well as um, just for your current like relief from symptoms. Um, and so anyway, we Alloy provides access to doctors in a very efficient, um, convenient and inexpensive way by doing it through secure messaging. So you, instead of going the way that you would in your sort of the current status quo, you try to get an appointment with a doctor. It takes eight or 10 months before you can get in the schedule. If you, God forbid, forget a question, you know, you have to go through the whole phone tree of every single person in the world before you would ever get to the doctor, where we connect women really directly with the doctors who are all mission-driven to provide this care for women and 
who by and large have been practicing um, gynecology and women's health for at least 15 to 20 years. So real experts in their field and really interested in doing this at the moment. And then we, um, your doctor will create a personalized treatment plan based on the symptoms and concerns and sort of goals that you personally have for how you wanna feel and what your particular health history is. Um, so they provide a treatment plan, send it to the pharmacy that we're connected to, and it all gets shipped out directly to your door. So um, we offer both menopausal hormone treatment, estrogen and progesterone in multiple different form factors and doses because every woman is her own woman and you know everyone is unique. Um, although there are very good and very, you know, safe and effective FDA approved regulated doses. So that's what we use for menopausal hormone treatment. And that really solves the pain. And then because we're women in this demographic as well, and we're really solving our own problems, it's like, okay, I solved the pain. Now I want to spark some joy. So what are the other things that I will want for myself to be able to feel my best and, and enjoy the next 40, 50 years of my life? One of those things that we've innovated is um, M4 face cream. So the use of topical estrogen on your skin, which is incredibly, I mean, it is the best product I've like ever used essentially. It, what it does for your overall skin health, it, you know, um, uh, helping your body produce collagen, elasticity, um, firmness and plumpness of skin, radiance, improving texture, reducing pore size. Like when you lose estrogen, that is why your skin starts to age very quickly and adding a little bit back in a very low dose actually really helps to improve all of those qualities when, you know, it's clear when women sort of become more dull or their skin becomes more wrinkly or, or thin, like that's obvious, but also from visually, but also from internally in terms of skin health, it's important that, you know, hormones are a good thing. That's why we have hormone receptors all over our body, um, estrogen receptors everywhere from our, you know, our brain to our skin, to our bones, you know, all over. It's not just a sex organ. Um, so we sell, um, it's called M4 face cream. We also offer um, Omazing, which is our name for topical sildenafil. So topical sildenafil is Viagra, which has been available for men for 25 years generically, but nobody ever thought to ask women <laughs> or try it on women. And actually it's, you know, it's something that has been available. If you know, if you knew where to look, it has been available for a long time through compounding pharmacies, or if you had a doctor who was willing to talk about these things, um, which most were not. So we're really creating access to something that is super safe and has been around for a long time. And there's no reason why it shouldn't be available to women. The clitoris is actually the only organ in the human body, male or female, that is only there for pleasure and arousal. It has no other function, which I thought was really interesting um, and is structurally the same as the penis. So, you know, it, it works by bringing blood flow and is helpful for arousal and um, stimulation. And we also have recently introduced low dose oral minoxidil, which actually made my hair really <laughs> amazing and kind of curly, which is great. Like I have a whole new head of hair, much thicker and longer, and I'm really happy with it. So that's another thing that has been available for men um, at men's doses for years. But what a bunch of dermatologists found is that um, at essentially a micro dose for women, it doesn't make you grow hair on the rest of your body, but it, and nor does it elevate your blood pressure or anything bad. It's just a really great tool for hair growth. So we're sort of, you know, solving the most acute problems, but then also understanding what are the other things that women are looking for in their lives to improve their quality of life. And that's what we offer at Alloy. Wow. I mean, like <laughs> you just gave me so much. I just need to um, go back and unpack all of this because um, I think the fundamental thing that you keep touching on um, is the fact that there are these products that have been on the market for men for many, many years. The, the way that women are invisible 
the way that women are ignored, the way that women are gaslit. I mean, the, the amount of doctors that I had to go to, to get HRT that was specific to my body, wasn't a birth control pill. Um, I, I, it was insane. Yeah. Um, my GP also because pretty much every medication that we've ever taken has almost only exclusively been tested on men. Correct. So it's only in this arena where it's sort of female specific that we're told like, Oh, hold on. Might, you know, might not be okay for you. Whereas like, really, that makes no sense whatsoever. Correct. So Correct. And, and women. they don't know the dosages and women aren't part of the, the clinical trials or the studies. It's, it's been um, an incredibly frustrating thing for me, um, helping women with their sleep. You know, it, it's the, the first line is always some sort of pharmaceutical. And I think that that's what you're touching on too. And so we, I know as women, the women I work with, the women you work with, want something more holistic, want something more personalized, want something from a company that understands their bodies, their life, their well-being, their goals. And so I feel like Alloy is just really disrupting the space in such a positive way. Yeah. Um, so I- One one's I, called a subversive and we're like, yeah, we like that. <laughs> All right, we'll take that. The yeah. rebel. I think right? what's interesting. What's interesting is that holistic has sort of been co-opted by people to mean non-pharmaceutical mm -hmm. and estrogen or, or hormone replacement therapy has also been- maligned as pharmaceutical and not natural. Whereas actually, if you really think about it, estrogen in a way that what is prescribed as menopausal hormone treatment right now, generally speaking, 90% of, of what women take as menopausal hormone treatment um, is estradiol and micronized progesterone, which are molecularly exact to what your body produces naturally which is why women feel so much better when they add some back because it's, it is the most natural thing that you could possibly sort of take with the exception of something that you actually made yourself in your body mm -hmm. versus a supplement or a medication or a, something else that's essentially like a foreign agent that's trying to mimic or you know, act in some way on your body receptors that isn't exact to what your body made before. And so I actually call those things less natural than estrogen. I don't think that there's anything more natural. That doesn't mean that there aren't other things. As I said, an alloy is a combination of elements. So it's not just one thing that's going to be the magic bullet. I frequently say that, you know, all of the estrogen in the world with, with a sedentary lifestyle and eating, you know, chicken nuggets every day and, and not getting any sleep and no relationships with other people, like that's not going to do the trick, but all of those things and no estrogen is also, you know, you're not really solving the problem. Yeah. The yeah. It's a tool in the toolkit that women need to have, especially as they age, if they want to stay healthy and vibrant and have longevity and have a quality of life. Yeah, hormone replacement is something that's a tool, like like yeah. everything else, diet, nutrition, mindset, like you said, exactly. everything with loved ones. Yeah. And also yeah. what's interesting about it is that for a lot of women, you know, for example, if you have palpitations or some of the um, frozen shoulder, the musculoskeletal yeah. syndrome of menopause, which is a, a, a new phrase, um, if you take estrogen and those things don't abate, you continue to have um, heart palpitations, for example, then you have information to know that maybe there's something else wrong. But if you're between 45 and 55 and you're not sort of using estrogen or menopausal hormone treatment as a first line defense for the majority of people, it's really safe and, and evidence-based. And of course there are women who, um, for example, who have had breast cancer or who are actively treating breast cancer, who will be told you can't have this, right? That's correct. Which is not necessarily accurate. Right. You know, I think that everybody should have a discussion, first of all, about their risks, their own risk tolerance and, and their own personal sort of health history and, and what is the right thing for them. But for most people, it is the absolute gold standard first line defense against menopausal symptoms. And if you continue to have menopausal symptoms after or other symptoms after kind of playing with the dose, with the form factor, with sort of optimizing what's right for you, um, then at least you have that information to keep looking as opposed to, you know, searching for everything under the sun before acknowledging that it could be menopause and trying hormones.
Yeah, and I think just the fact that Ally offers a, a solution for women that's outside of the traditional medical model is yeah. so important because, you know, like I told you before we were on camera, I mean, I when I turned 47, like literally the wheels came off the bus when I took my son to college. And I, I first went to my general practitioner because that's, you know, the first doctor that you go to in the order of our current medical mo model here in the United States to which I was offered antidepressants. Then I went to an endocrinologist of which I was offered a birth control pill. Then I went to my OBGYN, which I was also offered a birth control pill. And it was like, I, there was just no place for me to go. And I was so, so, so frustrated. And then, you know, I think about women in other cultures. I think about, you know, women of color. I think of women in different socioeconomic backgrounds. Like the system is just so rigged for us to not be able to find what we need at this stage in the game. And then comes along your company, which just levels the playing field for everybody. And I yeah, think that's absolutely. an amazing thing. Thank you. I mean, we were very, very conscious about one, wanting to launch in 50 states from day one, which we did, 50 states plus DC. We're working on Puerto Rico. Um, I don't, I've heard the stat. I haven't, I haven't um, confirmed this, but I've heard that 50% of counties in the United States don't even have an OBGYN anymore. So wow. OBGYNs are really focused on delivering babies. You know, that's why they go into it. They don't go into it generally to deal with menopausal women. So this kind of subspecialty or this phase of life has really be been kind of an orphan for a long time because nobody's wanted to touch it. It doesn't, it's not procedure based. There's not, you know, a lot of perceived money to be made in menopause. If you're a traditional, um, you know, in practice doctor. Um, so we wanted to, you know, I had been through the experience of being, of having been deleted from the system, essentially, you know, it was, I had my ovaries removed and the doctors were like, great, you're not going to get ovarian cancer. And, you know, so you're, you're out of our hands basically. And nobody wanted to, to manage my menopause. Um, so we wanted to be available to all. We wanted women to be our customers. So if you're going through insurance or health systems, guess who your customer is? The insurance companies and the health systems. And mm -hmm. when, or the, you know, I just, I just heard from somebody that um, the state of New Jersey canceled all of their contracts with companies that offer kind of point, of, like a specific type of service as opposed to a general um general wellness, general care, because the ROI wasn't good enough and people weren't using it enough. And so if you are dependent on that, then, you know, as a patient or as a company, then, you know, it's, it's really very difficult and you can't control your trajectory. You can't control your message. You can't control, you know, how much people have to spend, or you're always at the whim of what the insurance companies want. And we really did not want to do that. We felt that women, nobody has ever said to women, what do you need? How can we help you? You know, how can we make sure that your quality of life is as good as possible and that you get the treatment that you deserve spoken in a language that you can understand that's resonant, that's not dismissive, that's not gaslighting you, that's not telling you, you can't. Like if there are plenty of women who have come to us, I mean, actually we recently did an insight, a customer insight survey and discovered that um, from, we, we spoke to a thousand Alloy customers and the vast majority of them had searched for a solution through the traditional, you know, current medical system for four years mm. before landing on a solution with Alloy. That's a long time to suffer. And also the evidence is clear that the longer you suffer, all those symptoms are actually not benign. So, you know, having hot flashes sort of makes microscopic scars on your heart and your brain. So you don't, you shouldn't want to have hot flashes, like white knuckling it through hot flashes is no one's getting a medal for that. In fact, you're harming your health. And so just getting this information out to women and offering them beyond just the information, the ability to connect with the doctor and get the solution, you know, the prescription sent to their door so they don't have to go take time off from work or away from their kids or just having a good time to go stand in line at the local pharmacy, you know, that all of that adds hours back to your life and, and quality back to your life. And that's what's really important to us. 
Yeah. It, and it's just really important to everyone, right? It's just, yeah. this is a female issue and all women are going to go through menopause. And so, you know, I like the fact that you just talked when you were sharing your story about how you were looking for your doctor to manage your menopause. And now you flip the switch, the switch on the, the ability for women to be able to manage their own menopause. Yeah. And I think that that's a big mindset shift for women um, to thrive during this time in their life, because really giving your power away to somebody uh, and hoping that they're going to have an answer for you versus you being able to figure out what is the right thing for your body, for your life, for what you need, and then really advocating for yourself. You know, that is what I think this is all about. And that's really the gift of this time in life. And this whole transition is really learning to, you know, stand up for yourself and take better care of yourself and, and get the help when you need it. And so, Alloy really offers women just such a great avenue to be able to do that. And I really- Yeah, that is such it. an important point. It's really an important point because I think also, you know, now as a 50 year old woman, I think about like the, the prior 50 years leading up to this point, half of those, I was, you know, not a fully formed adult with agency. And then, you know, you start to develop your life and build experiences, but, you know, at 25 or 30, I'm, I was nothing like the person I am now with, I didn't have nearly the life experience or the, you know, everything was sort of moving towards a point. And now you get to this interesting time of midlife where you can look back at all the experiences and things that you've sort of done and developed over your life, but also, and then use that to be deliberate about what you want, how you want to show up in your own life going forward, which could be as many years going forward as you've lived thus far. And that's kind of a really profound thought and, and drives me actually towards in my own life, just thinking about like, what do I, what do I want? You know? Mm -hmm. And, and also now we were just discussing that our kids are around the same age. My kids are 19 and 17, you know, they're off doing their own things. So, and so it's a really good time to dig in to yourself and, you know, solidify those friendships and relationships, make sure that you are lifting heavy weights and, you know, focusing on your, your, your muscle structure so that you can stand in 30 years, you can right. continue to ski or hike or, you know, just lift grandchildren, like do all those things. You have to start that now in order to be ready for that. And, you know, for it not to sort of be a crisis in, in 20, 30 years from now. And right. I think that something that until this moment hasn't been explicit for people, um, certainly hasn't been explicit to me mm. until this, you know, until this time. And, and I think it's a really wonderful opportunity and also sort of amazing cultural shift that we're seeing happen where women are talking about it. Women our age are being open about what's going on with them and, you know, and how they're feeling and talking to other women about it and starting companies like this so that we can, like, Anne and I talk all the time about the fact that we're creating what we want for ourselves. We want something that's easy, that's convenient, that's inexpensive, that gets us everything that we need, plus the things that we want, you know, and doesn't shame us or make us take, you know, make us feel like we're, like we should feel embarrassed or bad about wanting to have more pleasurable sex or a better sleep or whatever it is, you know, Younger nicer skin, hair. better hair. Yeah. You know, all of it. Yeah. Right. All of it. Yeah. I call it authentic aging. You yeah. can age the way you want to age it. You want to go gray, go gray. You want to use hormone replacement, use it. You don't fine. Like it's, you know, you want to lift weights. Great. If you don't, you know, and it, fine, but it's like, you just get to choose the way that you want to live. What I call this third spark of life. Yeah. And that's what I love so much because everything is okay. As long as it's authentic to you and what exactly. you want. And I like that you touch on the fact that um, we now have the time to actually sit and think about what is it that I want, <laughs> right? Because before we were just running around with our hair on fire all the time, managing right. work, career, kids, family, you know, building, building, building everything, community, you know, and now all of a sudden we have a little bit more time to just sort of breathe and sit and go, who the heck am I? What do I want for this next stage in my life? And what is going to help make me thrive? And I know personally for me, I couldn't have gotten to that point without using hormone replacement. 
It was fundamentally a part of my, my mental health, my sleep, my energy, my body. I mean, I just, I mean, I, I was, I went from being so overly productive in my thirties and forties to literally just being flat on my back when I turned 50, between 50 and 51 and uh, with a back injury, with mm. insomnia, with just, I mean, it was just like, um, I was a mess. I literally just fell apart. And, um, and I, I just can't thank you enough for what you are doing in this space for women who want to make this choice to age in the way, you know, that authentically feels right for them. I couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> I'm very happy. I love doing what I'm doing right now. I love the connection that I'm able to make with women. Frankly, you said before that this is something that affects women, which it does, but it also affects men. And, you know, when men who are in relationships with women or who have mothers or who, you know, see the impact and the, you know, the positive benefit to whether it's their partner or their spouse, their, their mom, their friend, whomever it is, but women in their lives, it's really profound also. And when you think about, you know, the majority of divorces, for example, yes. happen around this time that, that doesn't get discussed. I've said to a couple of people like, just try HRT before you get divorced and see if, the same. <laughs> if it takes some of the noise and the, you know, the, like the bluster out of what you're feeling, because, you know, obviously no one should stay in a, in a relationship that isn't working for them, but there's so much that happens, you know, between all the things that you mentioned and, and add to it, aging parents and, and all mm -hmm. that other stuff. Like right. it's, it's, we we shouldn't minimize what's happening to our bodies and how that affects, you know, our minds and our and our mental state and our relationships and relationships and sort of longstanding relationships. I think whether they're with a partner or friends, girlfriends are some of the most important in that alloy of what's important mm -hmm. sort of today and going forward. I think friendship and relationships are really, really critical. Um, just for, you know, maintaining your mental health and your feeling of stability. And, um, you know, so it's really all of these things together that are, right. that are such well, a big deal. I mean, women biologically are wired, right. To live in a village. We are wired. We are community-based. We are very tribal. And so um, this is, this is a huge stress reliever for women, you know, it, it improve the oxytocin levels by being with your friends and lower those cortisol levels. And that's yeah. really a, a fundamental thing that's super helpful for women. You should not be alone. I, I always tell women that this is not your mother's menopause. This is not your grandmother's menopause. Um, they're, they're not forced hysterectomies the way that they used to be. Um, women are not isolated the way they used to be. And so we really have this benefit of, like you said, potentially living a good 30 to 40 years past our menopause journey. And I think we're really the first generation that's been able to do that. I was looking at statistics in 1923, the average life expectancy for women was 50 and the average age of menopause was 40. Women had 10 years after wow. they were procreating, not anymore. And so yeah. it's all, it comes back to that question of what works for you and how do you want to thrive and how do you want to have the best quality of your life? Yeah. yeah. I, I just, it, I, one thing I thought of that I didn't mention sure. before that we offer at Alloy is support groups. Mm. So, you know, I think that this has been a really also fundamental part of who we are and what we're offering is that community, that ability to connect with women. And it's my partner, Anna and I ran them for the first two years. And, and now our community manager, Rachel Hughes, um, runs the support groups, which are really great. There was one this Saturday, this past Saturday. And you know, just being able to see that there are women from every walk of life. We generally have women of multiple age, you know, ages, race, urban, rural, like they come from everywhere and everybody is experiencing the same thing up to this point because so few women are being validated and treated appropriately. Um, and so that's something that we've really tried to change and kind of open up that conversation across women. And it's, it's, they're beautiful things. It's really an amazing hour to spend with all of these different people who are, you know, obviously strangers to one another, but not after the first five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. That's really beautiful. Great. So wonderful. Okay. So how can women get in touch with Alloy? How can they, what, tell me the process they go through. They go to your website and then they fill out a form, correct? Yep. So our website is myalloy.com. Um, and you 
you, if you want um, menopausal hormone treatment, it's a slightly um, beefier intake with, you know, all of the things that, that the doctor would need to know in order to make a good um, prescribing recommendation. Um, frequently they come back with questions or, you know, you have an, you have unlimited access to the doctor to be able to for free, ask your questions for the, for, you know, the duration of this kind of consult. And then if you get a product um, shipped to you from us then for the duration of that prescription. So usually the prescriptions are written for a year and in that year's time, you can always contact the doctor, the same doctor will respond to you. Um, and also the doctors love working on the Alloy platform. So we have very little turnover in our doctor network, which I think is also really amazing. We've created a community for them as well. So it's, it's kind of a win-win-win for everybody who's involved, um, which is really nice. Um, if you're just looking for topical face cream or Omazing or vaginal estrogen or minoxidil, that you know those products really have much less complicated. They're they're just they're much easier to prescribe. They're almost there's nobody who will be contraindicated from them generally speaking. So you can just get that more easily and not pay a consult fee. The consult fee is fifty dollars to um, work with the doctor to come up with your menopausal hormone treatment. Uh, plan. Um, and that's $50 for the entire year. And then from then on, you're just paying for the prescription itself. So it's, you know, especially for something that we think is really a need to have for most women, like we've really tried to make it as easy and as, as accessible as possible without needing to have a specific insurance without needing, you know, so it's pretty much in line with what an insurance copay would cost. Um, and, and then never again. So for other services, you know, they want you to keep going if, especially if they're accepting insurance, they want you to have as many visits with a practitioner as possible. Whereas for us, like if you have a question at three in the morning, you can dash it off to the doctor and she'll respond, you know, the next day. And so it's meant to really fit into your life, like having an, an expert in your back pocket. Um, you can also find us on social media, um, on Instagram, on TikTok, on YouTube, we have a, a really great and growing catalog of um, webinars and videos that we have put together on YouTube. We do do webinars and Instagram lives very frequently with experts in the field. Um, so we're kind of all over. And we also do um, in-person events frequently. Um, we've done a bunch with Mary Claire Haver, a really great doctor in the space, plus uh, Dr. Vonda Wright. Um, I think we're doing something upcoming with Rachel Rubin, who's a urologist in DC. Um, and we do these cocktails and conversations parties, you know, ar sort of around the country with different groups of women. And it's pretty amazing. Like the, the, t the community and the good feeling and, you know, just women are really hungry for this information and um, being, not being lied to, not being gaslit, not being dismissed. Um, so just really giving facts and spreading good cheer is, is a really <laughs> powerful and important tool. So yeah. I really it, enjoy it. There's huge value in that. Huge yeah. value, Monica. Well, thank you so much for joining me and, and chatting thank with you. me about Alloy and, and everything that you're doing. I really, really appreciate it. It's my pleasure.